Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science. And today I want to talk to you about sustainability and low carbon footprint when it comes to cosmetic ingredients and formulations. Now, sustainability is all about being able to regrow what we use in a sustainable manner or source materials in a sustainable manner that doesn't have a negative or big impact on the environment. But being sustainable and being natural doesn't necessarily mean that the material has a low carbon footprint. In fact, when making some naturally derived materials, we end up using a lot of water, a lot of energy, and create a lot of waste and byproducts. So what is a low carbon footprint material and how can we make our cosmetics with a lower carbon footprint? Well, first of all, one of the things we need to do with the formulas themselves is to reduce the amount of water we're using either in the formula or in the processing of that product and its materials. It's also best if we can make formulas that are cold processable. So we're not needing to use heat or using a lot of heating or cooling or even water cooled jacketed vats to process the finished product. Now there's going to be times where they're not suitable options, so we can look at the materials themselves. First of all, to demonstrate, I wanna give you an example of a naturally derived ester and the type of processing it normally goes through. There's been some clever innovations in this area using enzymatic production to create the esters dramatically reducing the amount of time required to produce the finished material, but also the energy and temperatures and greatly reducing the water waste and other waste in the creation of these naturally derived materials. The result is the same naturally derived ester from the same natural sources, but with a lot less energy, water and waste involved. In this slide, you can see the difference in creating a non-RSPO Myristyle Myristate using conventional esterification processes versus using an RSPO certified Myristyle Myristate using the enzymatic esterification process. There's up to 52% reduction in the carbon footprint by using the RSPO certified material and the enzymatic esterification process. This is significant because not all esters are created equally. So if you're working towards having a low carbon footprint with your formulas and finished products, then you'll need to be talking with your suppliers about their processing methods. Now, as another example, you may not be aware that the overall carbon footprint from these combined ester or emollient sources can be significant in a finished product formulation. Obviously using different emollients, emulsifiers and consistency factors could alter the carbon footprint of your formulation. But in general, they have a big contribution toward the overall carbon footprint of your finished product, even when you're using sustainable and naturally derived materials. Again, it comes back to the processing of these materials that's so important and many of the naturally derived materials that we use today, while they're sustainable and usually biodegradable, they may not have the best carbon footprint and they have a significant contribution in most of our emulsions. As an example, using these enzymatic esters can reduce the carbon footprint of a standard naturally derived emulsion by up to 67%. That's significant if you're wanting to be making low carbon footprint claims about your product. In this slide, you can see some common examples of naturally derived esters and just what a difference enzymatic production can make to the carbon footprint of each material. In each case, they're exactly the same end material, but using enzymatic processing dramatically reduces the carbon footprint from using the standard esterification process used with your naturally derived ester materials. Sustainability and being wise with our water and energy consumption is becoming an increasing concern for consumers. Being naturally derived, using sustainable materials, using biodegradable materials is all great, but not when we're contributing so significantly to an overall large carbon footprint. It's great to see this sort of innovation from suppliers like Avonic and we'll hopefully see a lot of other suppliers 
following the same trend soon. Remember, if you wanna make products with a low carbon footprint, look at the processing of the actual formulation and look at the processing and the carbon footprint of the individual materials that go into that formula. In particular, your emollients, your emulsifiers, and your consistency factors. Even if they're naturally derived, and even if they're biodegradable, they still could carry a significant carbon footprint. Use RSPO materials where possible. Use cold processing for your finished product where possible. And remember, if you want to have a low carbon footprint, you'll need to get certification and look at your entire business processes, not just your products. It's a big commitment for a company to move towards low carbon footprint, but it's an increasing consumer demand that businesses move this way. I hope this video has been helpful to demonstrate to you that being naturally derived, being sustainable, doesn't necessarily mean it's a low carbon footprint product or materials in that product. And hopefully now you know the questions to ask your supplier and get the documentation if you want to be more carbon neutral in your business practices and formulations. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Please have any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.